Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, it's a big one. We're going to be talking about the newest project from Drake, an album slash mixtape called More Life. And if you can't tell, I have not been looking forward to this, and I've had a bad feeling about it for months now, if I'm being completely honest. Forget the lead-off singles, all which have been mediocre at best and awful at worst. Forget the fact that Drake's been seeing increasingly limited critical returns on all of his projects, even despite somehow being more popular in the mainstream than ever. Somehow, the more material he puts out, the worse he's getting. So now forget that just like Views, this project is 81 minutes. That's right, folks, over an hour of this. And given that I was extremely skeptical he'd be telling any stories or crafting any sort of distinct narrative that'd be anything like anything he put out before, that was going to be a problem. No, what gave me the real sinking feeling was the branding of all this. Not as an album, not as a mixtape, but as a playlist. And of course, a lot of music journalists got to their knees, take the hot load to the face, and gush about how Drake was revolutionizing music distribution. That, of course, he was still selling for $10.99 on iTunes. Now, I'm not going to deny there is a certain craft in putting together a good playlist and reading the flow of the audience and of the room and of controlling transitions and so forth. But if this album is all new songs, with the only real distinctive factor being Drake rolling it out on streaming platforms before physical copies are made available, if they're made available at all, it screams of being a really cheap way to avoid calling it, you know, an album. If anything, it makes him look like he's running away from critics who have been steadily charting his decline and will probably end up reviewing doing this anyway. Just because Drake has tried to change the nomenclature and prioritize one form of distribution over the other does not mean this is anything all that new. If anything, it perpetuates the utterly asinine pop culture trend that playlist makers will be the new drivers of taste, when in reality, it's the same format that mainstream radio DJs used to do before they were forced by delusional executives to play the same list of tracks in the same order over and over again every single day. But for some ungodly reason, you people wanted this. You people bought this and streamed this, and you wanted to hear me talk about it. Even though this will likely wind up overloading another episode of Billboard Breakdown, and I'll be forced to talk about all these songs all over again in a week or so. So, okay, what did Drake deliver on his newest album. Well, honestly, while I will say this is not quite as bad as I was expecting, he cut a few tracks that I was expecting to land on it, like that 21 Savage cut, although for some ungodly reason the obnoxiously terrible Fake Love is still on here. But the truth is that Fake Love is probably the worst song on this project. The rest, uh, look, it's a far cry from Drake at his best. It contains far too many of the tendencies that can frustrate me about him. It's overlong, it's dreary, it's got no momentum, it's all over the place, and it's overloaded with the sort of hypocrisy that reflects a lack of ideas and consistent themes, but it at least avoids some of the most obvious missteps that showed up on views, right? Well, that depends on what you expect from this project. And if the answer is more of what you'd heard from Drake for years now, well, you get both more and less of that. This project is 22 tracks at over 80 minutes, and throughout those 80 minutes, you can't really say that Drake isn't changing up his style or sound, which would be fine if it didn't feel like the tone and mood could shift wildly from track to track, considering he's calling this a playlist, the transitions really are quite wonky. One minute you get very desaturated and moody R&B cuts, although in comparison with the early Boy Wonder productions that came out in Take Care and Nothing Was The Same, it's nowhere near as groove-driven or atmospheric, and then you place them up against more upbeat dancehall cuts, show a little bit more brightness and bounce and are actually kind of likable, or at the very least more interesting percussion progressions and some actual groove for these songs, and that's not counting the cuts that are outright grime-inspired, with glassy synths, sharper beats, and slightly more aggressive tempos. It is still Drake here. More than views, it feels like a grab bag of styles and tones, and it's just a shame that so many of them are so dreary and lacking any sort of distinctive tune or melodic hook or swell that isn't blatantly recycled. Take Teenage Fever, midway through the second half of this album that drags really hard. We get this wonky, atonal warble that Drake actually sings pretty passionately against, only for him to copy-paste a pitch-down chorus from If You Have My Love by Jennifer Lopez as the hook. I don't care if they're currently dating, it feels incredibly lazy for him to do that. Now granted, laziness might as well be the rule with this project. Most of these songs run a good eight bars or more longer than they should, and even when you have a good sandy groove playing off a slightly more interesting melody line like on Passion Fruit, Drake felt the nerf to handicap the momentum right at the beginning to restart the song 40 or so seconds in for DJ banter. In other words, no good reason. Now that's not saying that there aren't some decent melodies and tunes here. The rubbery 
electronic bounce against the pianos opposite Georgia Smith on Get It Together. It's very likable. As was the liquid rollick of Madaliba Rhythm, the hazy key fragments of Lose You, and even the garish horns and farty trap beat of Ice Mills, which at least sounds decent with young thugs squawking over the hook. It's not a bad fit for his voice. Hell, even though you can tell that Drake is pulling a wholesale from grime, at least No Long Talk, KMT, Galchesta, and Skepta Interlude, they've got some bite even if they don't have much tempo to match the rest of more hard-hitting grime tracks. But speaking of Skepta Interlude, this is where we see one of the first compromises that Drake makes the whole playlist format. Namely, put songs on this album where he doesn't contribute at all. I get it how painfully underwritten a lot of this project feels in a second, but there are songs like Skepta Interlude, 4422, which only has vocals from Sampha, and Get It Together where Drake is a perfunctory presence at best. And it's really not a good sign that I consider both 4422 and Skepta Interlude's moments of respite from the rest of the album. I'd say the project gets a little bit better the less Drake there is, because his performance is really all over the place here, contrasting some more passionate R&B vocals with flows that are more choppy and slapdash than ever before. But that sort of statement would rely upon the guest performances being universally good, and that's also a real mixed bag. Sure, on the one hand, you got Georgia Smith, who's really strong, Sampha, and Skepta, but then you have Quavo and 2 Chains not being particularly interesting or funny or bombastic on Portland or Sacrifices, or Party Next Door continuing to waste everybody's time on Since Way Back. Then you have cases that are just kind of inconsistent. Young Thug sounds fine enough on Ice Melts, but even though more of his bars will actually connect on Sacrifices than I expected, it doesn't mean that a more restrained delivery on that song is a good sound for him. It's not all that interesting. And yeah, Giggs' delivery is pretty intimidating on the grime song No Long Talk, but some of his bars on KMT are among the corniness on this album when he references a girl looking all turkey in reference to Christmas and then follows up with an Adam West Batman reference, which doesn't really help you sound all that intimidating, dude. And then there's Kanye, who might as well sound focused, and his vocals are getting a little bit better in his singing range, but between the stuttered flow on the first verse at the end of every line and his lack of any real chemistry with Drake on the second verse makes the song glow a real chore to get through. I gotta say, I really wasn't a fan. I was glad when the Earth, Wind, and Fire sample came in for the end. And all this, it circles back to Drake himself and what he's trying to say with this project. And if I'm being honest, while there are less utterly stupid bars and situations referenced than views, which Drake outright even acknowledges saying that he was in a bad place when he made views in his mind, but the truth is that he's not really saying much that's all that distinct at all from previous records. What I found very telling is how on Can't Have Everything, he references how he never completely ends his beefs, which on the one hand allows him to continue kicking at Meek Mill and Tory Lanez and even some veiled shots at Jay-Z on Portland, but in the meantime, it feeds into an undercurrent of paranoia that was all the more pronounced on views and all the more apparent here. And while he reaches into other sounds and some flows for inspiration, and speaking of that, on Portland, it's more the little bit rich that Drake smacks MCs for stealing flows when this project is full of grime cadences and even a flow on KMT that sounds disturbingly like Look At Me from Triple X Tentacion, of all people. But his content is continuing to just swallow its own tail. We've heard a lot of this done in certain ways before, and often done better. And worse still is that Drake seems to have zero self awareness about any of it. Lose You has him wondering why he doesn't get the commendations for definitive success in his place in hip-hop over an admittedly decent flow, but has partially driven off choices that he himself has made to not say names to squash beefs, or how much he blatantly takes from other acts, or how willing he is to step outside of hip-hop culture to avoid being called a target. He's doing a lot of this to himself, and it feels slippery and borderline disingenuous, and thus I'm not all that sympathetic when Drake is upset that girls are starting to drift away from him or that fake people are trying to leech off him, or when he tries to throw another round of concern trolling at Serena Williams of all people for getting engaged and not telling him on nothings into somethings even after they broke up. Hate to say it, but it's not like Drake is showing the self-awareness and this behavior perpetuates this. And I can't help but think, this is a serious regression, especially compared to his earlier albums, and especially considering how barren of stronger punchlines and ideas these songs can feel. Because at least on earlier projects, he recognized how bad he can come across. Whereas now on songs like Can't Have Everything, he's calling his haters arrogant, and includes an extended sample from his mother at the end of the song saying how when they go low, we go high. Something which for all the girls he's screwed with and outed in his music, Drake has never been the one to take the high road when he can possibly avoid. It. And you want to know the worst thing about all this? 
I don't see any of this changing. At the end of Do Not Disturb, the closing track, it seems like his way to relieve tension is to hermetically seal himself back in the OVO bubble for another year, come back in 2018, and tighten that circle even further. And in the end, we're just left with a scattered mess of a project that never coalesces into anything with solid themes or ideas or anything that we haven't heard before. Outside of the hollow atonal mess with the chewy beat that is fake love, I don't quite think this record gets on as obnoxious as views can be, but isn't it the high notes either, and it doesn't make it good. For me, it's a 5 out of 10, and maybe a recommendation for hardcore Drake fans. But all the production styles that Drake is trying sounds better from different artists, and the songs where Drake doesn't show up here and those different artists take the forefront, that's proof of it. And it's not like he's saying anything that's all that compelling or interesting. Really, it is a continuation of views in that regard, coupled with no adequate excuse to run as long as it does, and it's not saying all that much and feeling as underwritten as it is. Yeah, be honest. It's not a playlist I'm going to be putting on repeat. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I have to acknowledge, this album was a real chore to get through, but I'm happy I did. I'm also happy never to be revisiting it. But if you're interested, link in the description below if you want to buy it. And the poll's right there if you guys want to tell me how wrong I am. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, and the link to my Patreon right there is over here if you guys want to get more involved in my scheduling process, where three times a week you guys get to vote on the records that go up and down my schedule, and once a week the guys in the higher Patreon tiers get to add albums to that schedule. More details in the link right there, but until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.